Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. And it's a truth that we operate really all Bible study, all discipleship, everything that we do to learn about the Word of God, including our individual Bible studies. The Bible is one long continuous story, and the longest arc throughout the entire book is the Ark of Grace. The beginning of the story in Genesis talks about the fall, about how humankind becomes separated from God. We read that in Isaiah 59 where it says, our iniquities have separated us from God. The long arc begins in the third chapter of Genesis, where it says God's going to take care of the problem of sin. And it goes all the way to the very last word of Revelation, Amen. It's finished. It's true. It's done. Over the course of that long arc from Genesis to Revelation, the Holy Spirit inspires the different authors to tell God's story in a way that integrates with all the others. In studying God's Word, one of the things that we want to do is pull on the threads as we notice them in the text and follow those threads back or forward through the different ways that the authors are presenting this similar or same truth. When we do that, we get to see different ways in which God has communicated the same truth to humankind. One of the great things about Lagos is that, like a study Bible, it integrates a number of these cross-references which help us find the ends of the threads, which help us find the direction we go back in the text or forward in the text to see how God has presented similar or the same truths to different people at different times. That's valuable to us because we can often find ourselves somewhere in that picture. If you're ready, I'm ready, let's get started. At the center of Bible study is the Bible itself. And one of the features that you find in a lot of Bibles are cross-references. That is a note or an indication of some kind that this thought aligns or parallels a thought in another passage. And so the editors of the Bible will link those two passages together. In your paper Bible, of course, you have to look at the reference. You have to turn to that reference and then return back to the passage that you're studying. We're looking right now at the Bible study, the First John Bible study that we set up in the last video. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll put a link up above that you can go watch that to see how we got to this arrangement. But let's zero in on the Bible and see what we're talking about. One of the great things about an electronic Bible, such as we have in Lagos, is that those cross-references can now become hyperlinks within the document. This little letter right here is a cross-reference. And when you rest your cursor over it, you'll see that it gives you the particular cross-reference for the idea that it's sharing there. Now, you have a couple of ways that you can go and look at this. You can click on it which activates it, you see this turns blue. And if you just rest your mouse over that reference, then you see a pop-up window come up and show you what that reference is. One of the important things about Bible study is studying passages or verses in context. So by clicking here, you see that we are taken over to Acts 4.20. So we can see that this thought doesn't stand on its own. It's in the middle of this interaction here. Now you're saying, gosh, now we've gone all the way to Acts from 1 John. We've got to go scroll back or do a look up again. No, you don't. You come right up here to this navigation arrow, and this goes back to where you were. You want to return back? Clicks there. So here we are back in John with the cross-references. These cross-references are all throughout the scripture all throughout the passages and they're in a lot of the other resources within your logos library a powerful tool that works with the cross references is called 
power lookup. To get to that, you go to tools and you click on power lookup right here, the little lightning bolt. Now watch what it does. When we click on power lookup, it has gone and looked up and brought over to here all of the cross-references from within our passage. You see, so that C, Acts 4.20, is right here. And now you look at this and you see some other references up above here. These references start up here. So on A, John 1.1, 1, 1, that references back right here. The Word became flesh in the beginning was the Word. And as you scroll forward, you see that these move with you. So if you want to keep all your references together, you can certainly do so. Again, remember we can move things to where we want them. So we can put this right next to our Bible here if that makes our study a little bit easier. When you're working with your Bible, you might be tempted to think that you can just use the scroll wheel or grab a bar over here and move up and down. But there are a lot of ways to move around in your electronic Bible. You have some shortcut keys up here. So let's get back to 1 John. If I want to go section by section, I can use this down arrow and it's going to take me, you can see here, to chapters in John. Same thing back up. Now, article will mean something different in one of your other resources, but in the Bible, it's generally going to take you chapter to chapter. Same thing here. Up, down, back, back. Okay? If you want to get a little more granular, you can go verse by verse. Okay? And you see the little orange circle that tells you what verse you're on and you're bouncing from verse to verse. And finally, you can go from book to book. So we can go from 1 John to 2 Peter and back. If you're going and you get yourself lost as you're studying, just type your reference back in here. You'll go back, right back where you started. Another kind of symbol that you may encounter while you are navigating through your text is something called a visual filter. It is a kind of overlay that Logos can place over the text of different resources to indicate or to provide some new information for you as you're studying. We see an example right here in chapter 2, verse 4. See the little megaphone. And then the that's supposed to be a little person icon to see what visual filters are available or what can be turned on and off in your text. You click on this icon right here, the visual filters icon. When you click on that, you will get a drop down box of filters that are appropriate to that resource. Not every filter is available in every resource. So, for example, if we want to turn off the addressee labels, we simply uncheck it. And you'll notice that it has vanished down here. Same thing with the speaker. All gone. So we'll put those back on and we'll see what they do. The addressee label tells us who is being spoken to in the text. And the megaphone, of course, tells us who is speaking. So whoever says, speaking in general, this gives us an idea in the text whether it is a specific address or whether it is a general address. You remember in our previous video, we attached a note to 1 John 1, 7 through 9. And we notice right here that that little note icon is gone. Again, that's a visual filter. Click there. Scroll down to Notes and Highlights. You see that's unchecked. Tells me that there are some available. When I click, that is turned back on. As we get further along in learning how Logos works, we'll come back to this again and again as we see what different things mean. Community tags, corresponding selection, these types of things make sense when we have other resources open. 
Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. Click the subscribe button and hey, click the little bell next to it so you'll get a notification when I post a new video. God bless you and good luck with your study.